to introduce the woman who's had an amazing career, Ms. Jackie Walker. someone like me to be here in the Rainbow Room in New York City. Um, and a real honor to join the hall today with Tim Bush, a man who has been my boss in recent years. Uh, and we are now joining three of my former colleagues at WIVB Buffalo in the hall. They are the late, great voice of the Bills, Van Miller, uh, my friend and colleague of many years, Marie Rice, and a gentleman I pretty much grew up with in this business, and he's in the room today, although I don't see him right now, Chris Musial, also in the hall with us. Uh, please know that I do not take this honor for granted. 42 crazy years in this business tells me nobody does this alone, and that is certainly true in my case. My husband sacrificed more than you can imagine in order to get me here. He was married to a woman who worked nights for decades and still does. A woman who is, has a totally inflexible schedule and who will often have to drop everything at home just in a moment's notice when news breaks. So this trophy really belongs to him, the sexiest and smartest man in this room today, Mike Piatto. Sorry, Eric, you thought, you thought it was good. <laughs> uh, children also sacrificed for a career like mine, absolutely. I was never the mom who was able to bake cookies for the class or volunteer for the class field trips, but I could not be more proud of the two young men that my boys have become. Matthew is now a partner with a law firm in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Michael is an administrator at NYU, married to Taryn, father of the most beautiful child on this planet, <laughs> Casey. Michael, I thank you boys for what you have sacrificed to get your mother up here today. Uh, I also want to thank <laughs> my general manager, Brian Kennedy, was nice enough to make the trip here today to be with me. Uh, Senior Vice President at Nexstar, Teresa Underwood, I thank you for being here. Jerry Walsh, Vice President of Local Content, and uh, my current news director, a rising star at Nexstar. She has brought a lot of fresh new ideas into the newsroom. She's been a big supporter of me, Lisa Polizzi. Thank you so much for being here. In 42 years, you can imagine the uh, station owners, the general managers, the news directors, the layers of management that I've seen come and go. Almost all of these people, almost all of them, had a hand in getting me here today because they kept their hands out of the newsroom. They let us report the news the way we knew was the right way to do it, with accuracy, with fairness, with accountability, with independence, so important. When I started in this business, uh, the doors were just opening for business, uh, for women in this business. We had that first and second wave. We had Barbie Walters, Leslie Stahl, Diane Sawyer, Connie Chung, but there were still barriers to knock down. For instance, 
whenever there was a story about breast cancer, I had to read that story because I was the only one at the anchor desk with breasts. That's how it was decided back then. Now, a lot has changed since then, and believe it or not, the Lorena Bobbitt story had a lot to do to change. <laughs> there were consultants along the way. One consultant told me that my male anchor should always drive the bus. I should never try to drive the bus. He drives the bus. One told me to stop wearing blazers on the air because it made me look too masculine. One came to my home, went through my closet, and threw clothes on the floor that I should never wear on the air again. And one actually told me to make mistakes on the air because my male co-anchor thought my delivery was too perfect. <laughs> then there was the general manager who called me a dinosaur because I believed in big J journalism. A few weeks later, when I went to his office to sign my new contract, the best contract I'd ever been offered, by the way, I brought along one of my son's dinosaurs with flashing red eyes, and it could walk and talk and roar. And I put that dinosaur on his desk and let it roar around as we signed my new contract. <laughs> I think you got the message there. He got the message. These are a few of the blips along a long road that I have traveled in this business. But that road, as you saw in the video, has been paved with so much joy and discovery and opportunity that it's impossible to measure. I have flown in an F-4 Phantom jet and broken the sound barrier. I have questioned presidential candidates. I've watched seriously ill children take new treatments, recover, and then grow into adulthood. This career has brought me face to face in conversation with Oprah, with Letterman, with Paul Newman, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Muhammad Ali. This job has allowed me to help raise literally millions of dollars for people in need, people with disabilities, people without a voice. But I look down the road and I have concern for the future of our business. Will the broadcasters of the future, men or women, be allowed to travel this same road? A decades long career in this business these days is hard to imagine because promising young people are bailing out in large numbers across the country. Coming out of this pandemic, they have so many other choices bigger pay, better hours, clearer pathways to success. That phrase, work-life balance, it means a lot to them. And it should mean that to us. We have to provide that balance. We can provide that balance. Because what we do in local newsrooms today matters on a grand scale in this country. And we must survive with the help of all those young people, if we can hang on to them, the best and the brightest. But today is about gratitude, my gratitude for being here, because almost every good thing I have in this life, I can attribute to this career, this profession, this opportunity to be a New York State broadcaster. And that may sound bold, but I can prove it to you right now, and I will leave you with this. In 1982, I was anchoring the 6 and 11 o'clock news at WROC in Rochester. And one night when I got off the air at 6.30, there was a man on the phone, and he said to me, I've been watching you for about a year now and I think we would be very good together. Okay, that was before we knew what the word stalker meant. <laughs> I knew enough to know that was trouble and that was creepy. And I said to him, I, I'm very busy, I'm very busy, I can't talk now, you'll have to call me later, click. Well, that man was very persistent and he called back later that night and he kept talking, he kept talking, he said, 
Look in the phone book. There's my name and there's my father's name. It's the same name. There's the addresses where we both live. And I thought to myself, you know, if he were an ax murderer, would he tell me where his father lives? Unless it runs in the family, you know. <laughs> so I finally agreed to meet him that weekend for brunch in a well-lit restaurant. <laughs> and the punchline on this story is, we've been married for 36 years now and our sons are right there. Thank you so much for this great honor. Congratulations to all the honorees. One more time, Jackie Walker.